You are about to hear baseball history as related by Wade Hoyt, voice of the Cincinnati Reds. After 22 years of big league baseball in both the National and American Leagues, Wade Hoyt is well equipped to discourse on baseball anecdotes, legends, pranks, and jokes during the rained out periods of ball games. His true love of our national pastime, baseball, is best demonstrated by his rendition of Ernie Harwell's Tribute to Baseball, broadcast from Sportsman's Park, St. Louis, May 3rd, 1959. Now this was written by Ernie Harwell, who broadcast for the Baltimore Orioles. I think it's probably one of the greatest classics ever devoted or inscribed to the game of baseball. And you will listen to it if you will, and, and I think it's a great thing, and I think you'll appreciate this. It has a little preamble here, and it says this is a tribute to the to baseball. It is one of the very few articles on the sport which hangs in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Now, I'm going to read you this, and I think it's a tremendous thing, and I hope that you will pay uh, close attention to it. I'm going to read this to you anyway. Baseball is President Eisenhower tossing out the first ball of the season and a pudgy schoolboy playing catch with his dad on a Mississippi farm. It's the big league pitcher who sings in nightclubs and the Hollywood singer who pitches to the Giants in spring training. A tall, thin old man waving a scorecard from his dugout. That's baseball. So is the big fat guy with the bulbous nose running out one of his 714 home runs with mincing steps. It's America, this baseball. A reissued newsreel of boyhood dreams, dream lost somewhere between boy and man. It's the Bronx cheer and the Baltimore farewell. The left field screen in Boston, the right field dump at Nashville's so Fidel. The open stands in San Francisco, the dusty windswept diamond at Albuquerque, and a rock home plate and a chicken wire backstop anywhere. There's a man in Mobile who remembers a triple he saw Hannes Wagner hit in Pittsburgh 46 years ago. That's baseball. So is the scout reporting that a 16-year-old Sandlot pitcher in Cheyenne is the new Walter Johnson. It's the wizened little man shouting insults in the safety of his bleacher seat. And the big smiling first baseman playfully tousling the hair of a youngster outside the player's gate. Baseball is a spirited race of man against man and reflex against reflex. A game of inches. Every skill is measured. Every heroic, every failing is seen and cheered or booed. And then it becomes a statistic. In baseball, democracy shines its clearest. Here, the only race that matters is the race to the bag. The creed is the rule book. Color is something to distinguish one team's uniform from another. Baseball is Sir Alexander Fleming, discoverer of penicillin, asking his Brooklyn hosts to explain Dodger signals. It's player Mo Berg speaking seven languages and working crossword puzzles in Sanskrit. It's a scramble in the box seats for a foul and a $125 suit ruined. A man barking into a hot microphone about a cool beer. That's baseball. So is the sports writer telling a 383 hitter how to stride and a 20 victory pitcher trying to write his impressions of the World Series. Baseball is a ballet without music, drama without words, a carnival without Cupid dolls. A housewife in California couldn't tell you the color of her husband's eyes, but she knows that Yogi Berra is hitting 337, has brown eyes, and used to love to eat bananas with mustard. That's baseball. So is the bright sanctity of Cooperstown's Hall of Fame and a former big leaguer who is playing out the string in a Class B loop. Baseball is continuity, pitch to pitch, inning to inning, game to game, series to series, season to season. It's rain, rain, rain splattering on a puddle top Poland as we are today as thousands sit in damp disappointment just as we are here in St. Louis and the click of typewriters and telegraph keys in the press box like so many awakened crickets. Baseball is a cocky bat boy, the old timer whose batting average in increases every time he tells it. A lady celebrating a home team rally by mauling her husband with a rolled up scorecard. Baseball is the cool, clear eyes of Rogers Hornsby, the flashing spikes of Ty Cobb, an overage pixie named Rabbit Moranville and Jackie Robinson testifying before a congressional hearing. Baseball, well, it's just a game as simple as a ball and a bat, yet as complex as the American spirit it symbolizes. It's a sport, business, and sometimes even religion. Baseball is tradition in flannel knickerbockers and chagrin in being picked off base. It is dignity in the blue surge of an umpire running the game by the rule of thumb. 
It is humor holding its sides when an errant puppy eludes two groundskeepers and the fastest outfielder, and pathos dragging itself off the field after being knocked out of the box. Nicknames are baseball, names like Zeke and Pie and Kiki and Home Run and Cracker and Dizzy and Dazzy. Baseball is a sweaty, steamy dressing room where hopes and feelings are as naked as the men themselves. It's a dugout with spike-scarred flooring and shadows across an empty ballpark. It's the endless list of names and box scores, abbreviated almost beyond recognition. The holdout is baseball, too. He wants 55 grand or he won't turn a muscle. But it's also the youngster who hitchhikes from South Dakota to Florida just for a tryout. Arguments, Casey at the bat, old cigarette cards, photographs, take me out to the ball game, and all of them are baseball. Baseball is a rookie, and his experience no bigger than a lump in his throat, trying to begin fulfillment of a dream. It's the veteran, too, a tired old man of 35, hoping his aching muscles can drag him through another sweltering August and September. For nine innings, baseball is the story of David and Goliath, of Samson, Cinderella, Paul Bunyan, Homer's Iliad, and the Count of Monte Cristo. Willie Mays making a brilliant World Series catch and then going home to Harlem to play stickball in the street with his teenage pals. That's baseball. And so is the husky voice of a doomed Lou Gehrig saying, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Baseball is cigar smoke, hot roasted peanuts, the sporting news, winter trades, down in front, and the seven-inning stretch. Sore arms, broken bats, a no-hitter in the strains of the star-spangled banner. Baseball is a highly paid Brooklyn catcher, telling the nation's business leaders, you have to be a man to be a big leaguer, but you have to have a lot of little boy in you, too. Yes, this is a game for America, this baseball, a game for boys and for men. Now, that was written by Ernie Harwell, H-A-R-W-E-L-L, who broadcast for the Baltimore Orioles. He wrote that. It's a beautiful thing, a beautiful testimony, I believe. And I can only say this in testimony to that. I wish that I had written it. 